What is up, guys? It's me, Chair Salsa. It's been a long time. So, yeah, that's right. This is a Nerf gun. And that's not any Nerf gun. It's the Nerf Barricade, the one I tried to get, like, three months ago, but never could. So, here we are. I just found this one in Goodwill, like I find every other pre-elite blaster in my collection, except the Recon. Yeah. So, let's talk. So, I haven't recorded a Nerf video in a long time. Why is that? Mainly because I don't want to run out of ideas. By the end of the year, I'm going to do a montage of just random junk of my channel. And it's going to probably consist of almost every single Nerf video. So because of this, the more videos I make, the more or less ideas I have later on. Not only that, but I'm also not even into Nerf right now. I'm into fans. So doing stuff like this in the middle of when I'm doing fan stuff is just kind of weird. Um, if you haven't been paying attention... I've been making fan videos, like, a lot, and there's more to come, I have some other blade swaps I gotta upload, and that's that. So my last Nerf video was in, what, April? So it's now August, so it took a little while, but here we are. So, yeah, I'm at, not home in my, my, I'm at my grandparents, so that makes it even better, this great that I make a Nerf video, and when I finally get the chance to, I don't even do it at home where my other Nerf guns are, so. But it doesn't matter, because today we're doing a review on this blaster, so we don't need the other Nerf guns, or my background, or anything else. Yes, the Barricade. I've been trying to get one of these forever, like literally forever, and I finally got one for four bucks at Goodwill. I just cleaned it today, I just ripped it apart and cleaned some of the components, because it's actually really good condition. And just rubbing alcohol the entire blaster. Swap the batteries. Clean the springs for the batteries because one of them was dirty. Clean the rotating thing here. The barrel. Whatever. This is a weird blaster. So I'm pretty sure that this is the first flywheel blaster Nerf has ever made. I'm pretty sure. The flywheels aren't your normal flywheels. They're actually the sharp flywheels. And as you can see in there... But you can't see because that's how iPhone works. You see all these little, like, little ridges? Yeah, those are the old flywheel styles. Pretty weird. So technically, this is the Strife before the Strife even came along. It's semi-auto, mechanical trigger. It's literally a Strife before the Strife. So yeah, a cylinder power, cylinder powered Strife is pretty cool. And it doesn't have a rev trigger. It has a rev switch, which is this thing. Weird, isn't it? That doesn't end there. You know how your typical flywheel blaster uses four AA batteries? Well, this one uses three. Don't know why, but it only uses three. So that's the very first flywheel blaster pretty much ever. And that's kind of how they firstly did it. And then later on, they... Now they have flywheels we know now. They have rev trigger, you know, different things. So let's go over to the blaster itself. So basically, starting up at the front, there is no end strike attachment. So, you want to put your barrel on there? Well, too bad. Um, yeah, there is like an iron sight thing up here, which is what that is. Moving back here, there is a jam door. So you open that, and then you, you know... Oh my god, I'm jammed. And then there you go. Clear out your jam. Shut your door. And there you go. Moving back, there's a very kind of long rail. Considering it's only one rail, it's pretty long. Um, but that's a rail. Moving to the back, we have the stock attachment point. So you can put on your stocks. Which is funny, because you cannot put a barrel on. So you can make this something. It does not have the old style stock. Like the Recon has that little bar. Um... This has a normal stock attachment point. Down to the grip. The grip is very nice. Nothing to that. Trigger. Usually for a flywheel blaster, I'd say a trigger and then a rev trigger. But since there's only one trigger, so there's nothing else. Just the trigger and the trigger only. On the other side, there is a rev switch, which is weird. You probably have never seen this. There's like a little dart with an X indicating that you can't fire. And there's little three darts indicating you can turn back and down. Yes, it's very noisy, I am aware of that. 
Um, it, this whole blaster is noisy because when I was test firing it without even darts in it, um, it was very weird. The springs were very loud. It was just noisy. I hit the trigger and it's like, <laughs> I'm like, what is that noise? I open it up and there's really nothing wrong. So I took the components apart. I'm like, mm. so I guess it's just going to be a noisy barricade, but whatever. Um, not much else to talk about. There's the cylinder here that holds 10 darts. Hint, hinting the barricade RV-10. I'm not sure what RV stands for. Um, a rented vehicle. I don't know. Um, a 10 obviously stands for that. Both sides, uh, we have the Nerf logo because they have to put it everywhere. Can't forget that. And yeah, and the back of the rail, I forgot to talk about, there's a little thing that corresponds with the iron sight right there, the top. So, I don't have any stocks with me, I don't have anything else, I only have this bag of zombie strike darts, so that's what we're going to be using. Oh no. I do like this blaster, I just test fired it, and it's pretty weird, so. Here we go, yay! I don't know how I'm going to add, I'm not, don't know how I'm going to do this, remember, I'm not home right now. So this is not going to be normal. Maybe if I set you here. Maybe that'll work. I don't know. This is where I shoot. You've seen this place before. Just not as much. If you're a new subscriber, this is the first time you're going to see it. Oh, by the way, thanks for like 170-something some, 100 subs out of the blue. I don't know what that's about. My channel just kind of, like, spiked. I think I have 18 darts in here for some reason, so. Let's load her up. I do want to note something. You can put elite darts in here, but you can only put them that far. If you push them down any further, because you can, they'll just kind of click into place. It'll not fire. I did this in a whole blaster. The like, entire thing seized up, and I had a fun time getting that to unseize. So do not do that, because the average nerf for nowadays just has elite darts. So, and Accu Strike darts are under the line of elite darts. They're under that. They're uh, technically the general term is called the micro dart, but also you can't pull the trigger until this is on. Which is like it's not really a safety because I know you guys are like, yeah, what a dumb safety. It's really just for the blaster safety. I don't know why that took so much force to turn. This thing's jamming up for some reason. Over time of my usage, it'll probably unjam. I, I'm sure the original owner probably just didn't use it as a whole lot. Alright. Turn around, here we go. See what I mean? Noisy. Very noisy. Um, it didn't fire too bad. It's kind of weak. Very weak. Yeah. This is like taking a strife and putting three AA batteries in there and then a uh, dummy. Dummy battery. So, yeah. My other pre elite blasters are actually pretty strong. My recon's pretty strong. My sonic recon's really strong. My knife finder is not strong at all, but. My switch shot is probably the strongest one, and my Maverick shoots pretty hard too, which is surprising because Maverick was very popular in the day. So I'm surprised my because remember these all these pre elite blasters I get from Goodwill are used. So someone used this before I did. They're kind of weak. So. Alright, um, to the conclusion. Yep, and the camera angle changes again. That's because I made it change. So, in conclusion, do I like this blaster? Yes. Now, until I go home and fire it, I don't really know how average it is. I don't have a chronograph here. I don't have any way to test it, so I don't, I don't know. So, maybe unless I go home, I'll be able to test it. But... Not too bad. Some things I like and I don't like about this blaster. Some things I like is the, um, the rev switch. 
I, it's a pro and a con, because I don't like this because it's stupid, but I do like it because it's unique and it's a new thing. That's just cool. Another thing I like is the stock attachment point. These pre-lead blasters, even though, even though it has no barrel, only one rail, pre-lead blasters are cool to put a different attachments on because they're just funny. You know, like you put a module or something on there and then you're like, hey guys, look at my old blaster, but my brand new stock. It's just weird. It also helps for nerf setup, so that's a huge pro for me. Um, there's not too many pros. That's probably it. Um, and I guess it looks cool. It does look pretty cool, doesn't it? Pretty cool blaster. Cons. What's so bad about the this uh, barricade? Cons. Well, it doesn't have the barrel thing, which I'm not going to complain about too much, but it's going to look dumb putting any stock on and any, like, scope, if you will. But there's no barrel, so what's the point? Another thing is the three AA batteries is dumb, but I have to hand it off to a Nerf because this is their first attempt, so they don't really know what they're doing. It's not like they could have said, hey, in 2010, we we used four, so we, let's do it again. They never did this before, so their original intention was like, three works. Later on, they've learned that four AA batteries works just as well. So yeah, another thing I don't like is the switch. Again, it's kind of annoying. And if you use it a lot, you will you will hurt your thumb. I mean, just the firing gun mode, my thumb was getting sore from just hitting that too many times. And finally, the last biggest worst con on this blaster is this loading system. I don't mind the cylinder, but I, what I don't like is this stupid elite dart thing. And sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes when you load them in there and you tip the blaster forward, your darts will just fall out. Like I said, I don't think this was really made for the micro dart, but... I'll see if I can get any to pull out. I was walking around casually with the blaster like this, and I had at least like five darts fall out. And I'm like, where do you, like, what's going on? Looks like none of them are falling out, but one of them is pretty loose. This one's starting to fall out. But that's not it. You need, if you put it in too far, your whole blaster will seize up, and then you have to take it apart and fix it, and that's a huge pain. Like, if you just put it in like that, that, that's, that right there is going to kill you, right there. This will not, but it's just kind of hard because you can put it in there all the way. If it's too loose, it's going to fall out or it won't fire at all. You know, the magazines, you throw them in there. There's really no limit. There's no too far back or too far front. It just fits in there and that's it. Or other cylinder blasters are the same exact way. You put the dart in there. It doesn't go any further back and it doesn't fall out because it's made for this dart design. This blaster is not. Remember, this is pre-elite. And these days, we didn't really use these darts for this blaster. We use these weird other darts. Like the original Mega Dart. You probably don't even remember the original Mega Dart. The original Mega Dart isn't anything we know today. It was a similar dart like this with a bigger head onto it. Which is pretty weird. And then you have the Whistler darts, which is same thing. So, honestly... This blaster technically isn't made for that, but it can fire them. And I don't know if that's why it's so weak, because my Night Finder is the same way. Sometimes it doesn't fire the Elite Darts correctly, and that's because they're Elite Darts. It's not meant to fire that. In 2004, in 2004, I don't even think these existed yet. They weren't, these weren't popular. They were using different types of darts, like Whistler darts. They weren't using this yet. This wasn't that popular. They probably still had them, they just didn't use them, because, like I said, it wasn't popular. But... Yeah, so that's the downside with the pre-elite blasters, is sometimes they just don't fire the elite darts because they weren't designed to. That's They weren't really the thing yet. When elite came along, these were the standard. The elite dart came out, they colored this blue with the orange tip, the new elite series in 2012, all the way up until now. And that was, that's pretty much what standardized it. Now we all know this dart because it's because of that elite line. But before that, the pre-elite line, which is what this is, they didn't it wasn't designed to have that yet. So that's just a little history for that for you. It's still cool. It still fires the darts, which means I could still use it. So there you go. If you guys enjoyed this video, check out my other nerf videos from like more than three months ago. I'm sorry, guys, but I'm into fans right now. So I'm going to do that. Speaking of fans, I have a new fan on its way. So it'll probably be here next week. So stay tuned for that. And I have a few fan videos I'm uploading. So that's also going to be coming up probably either before or after this video. So that's that. If you guys enjoyed this, see you guys in the next one. And goodbye!